Hello folks, I'm Ronald Mehta and welcome back to digit.com. We are your digital aid and we provide free courses on the subject of business and marketing. In this video, we are going to take a brief step on the topic of 7 pieces of marketing along with live examples and case studies. Let's start with the first one. A service product is a bundle of features and customer benefits. A customer has various needs attached to a service product. To understand a service product, it is necessary to understand different levels of product within a service. According to Philip Kotler, a marketer needs to think through five levels of service product. The five levels of product constitute a customer value hierarchy. Let's take a quick stab at product levels and services. The first is the core product. This refers to the basic product. Here, the focus is on the purpose for which the product is intended. Then comes the generic product. This represents all the qualities of the product. Third is the expected product. This refers to all the benefits customer expects to get when they purchase a product. Fourth, augmented product. This refers to all the additional factors which set the product apart from competition, that is, its brand identity and image. And finally comes the potential product. This refers to the augmentations and transformations that the product may undergo in the future. Now let's apply an example of a 5-star hotel to the product levels. In case of a 5-star hotel, the core product would be rest and sleep. The basic product would be the hotel room, bed, bathroom, towels, desk and closet. The expected product would be clean beds, fresh towels, working lamps and the relative degree of quietness. The augmentation benefits as in what sets a hotel apart from the other hotels would be the supplier food that suits customers' health, maybe a tablet-based control room or voice-activate control features. The potential products in the hospitality segment now are smart mirrors, keyless entry and maybe underwater hotels. Moving on to new service development stages. The first, idea generation. The ideas can be generated through internal sources like sales staff, frontline employees and market research department and external sources like customers, experts in the field, market information system and trade journals, seminars and conferences. The next is idea screening. In this stage, those ideas are identified that are promising and have potential to be successful. The evaluation committee screens various service ideas rigorously in order to ensure that the ideas are consistent with the company's mission, image and capability. Moving on to stage 3 is the stage of concept testing. Concept testing involves translating the service idea into service concept with specific need satisfying aspects. Testing is done through presenting the idea to a consumer panel with the help of a brochure, literature and other visual presentation to test the reactions of the crew. Fourth is the business analysis. At this stage, the financial and marketing feasibility is carried out to find the practicality of the project. The firm will proceed to develop the new service only if the information on the above aspect is complete and viable. Number 5. Service Development The business proposal must then be converted into the actual service that will be delivered to the customer. All tangible elements and service delivery process must be designed. Number 6. Market Testing Market testing helps the service firm to remix the marketing mix elements in order to reduce the risk of launch. And finally, the stage of launch. The final stage of the new service development process is launching the service. The life cycle of the service begins and the new service will now start earning revenue for the firm. Moving on to some examples under product, the first one being luxury travel. Luxury tour operator witnesses increased demand for around the world journeys by private jet. Luxury tour operator Abercrombie and Kent is witnessing growing demand for its around the world journeys by private jet. 24 day journey starts at a ballpark $154,000 per person in double occupancy. As stated by the senior vice president, since the return to travel, we have seen an increase in demand for longer, more immersive trips, especially our private jet journeys, which were the first and fastest to fill. The journey year has space for 48 guests who will discover some of the world's most fascinating places alongside experts for the deep understanding of the cultures. The itinerary concludes on May 29, 2023, which begins in Seattle and includes Kyoto, Japan, Kathmandu, Mount Everest, Paro in Bhutan, Agra in India, Abu Dhabi, Petra and Vadiram in Jordan, Dormin Silsi and Boston. The next example under product is of luxury hotel, the Obra Hotel in Mumbai. The Obra in Mumbai Hotel has a marble flooring procured from the Greek island of Thassos. Post the renovation in 2010 due to a terrorist attack, the check-in count was removed and Tiffin, the restaurant, was renamed Phoenix, a reference to the mythological Phoenix who rose from the ashes. Kandahar, the restaurant serving Northwest Frontier Cuisine was changed to Zia, which was Chef Vineet Bhatia's version of modern Indian cuisine. And finally, the 300 rooms were reduced to 287, 
with the Kohinoor suite, the most expensive, at rupees three lakh, which is about four thousand dollars per night. So that's it, folks. This brings an end to the topic on service product. These are the list of sources and links referred to for the content in the video. Now, price is a significant element of the marketing mix because it is the only element that produces revenue, whereas the other elements produce cost. Price reflects the value attached to the service by the service provider, and it must correspond with customers' perception of value. Service providers offer a range of service at different price levels to cater to the needs of different target segments that may have different levels of purchasing power. Now, prices have different names and services. For instance, in the field of insurance, they are called premium. For banks, it is interest. In terms of transport, fares, credit card fees, and when it comes to share or stock services, we talk about brokerage. Now, moving on to the methods of pricing. First, cost-based pricing. It is also called as a cost-plus pricing. Under this method, the company determines the cost of service delivery as well as a predetermined date of profit in order to arrive at a price. It is necessary to analyze all costs accurately and differentiate between fixed and variable cost in order to use cost as a basis for pricing decisions. In the service industries, it is complicated to identify and trace the cost to the particular offering. Moving on to the next one, demand-based pricing. Demand-based pricing is generally used where the services are price sensitive. The service providers tend to increase the price of service offering when demand is high, whereas tend to lower the price of the service offering when the demand is low. Moving on to the third method of pricing, that is competition-based pricing. In this method of pricing, the price is determined on the basis of competitor's price. This strategy works well between Burger King and McDonald's. Price under such situations may be used to gain short-term competitive advantage over rivals. Companies here have three main choices under this approach: first, pricing above the competition. Next, below the competition, and finally, at par with competition. Now, moving on, an example of pricing in services. In this case, Uber's dynamic pricing. Many times, people notice cab fares to be on the higher side compared to normal rates on a weekend night. Such a pricing strategy is recognized as surge pricing or dynamic pricing. Companies such as Uber make use of normal peak hours, bad weather conditions such as rain, events, maybe concerts or movie premieres, traffic conditions, unseen emergencies, and so on in their favor. In this case, systematic algorithms fuel the technique due to which businesses such as Uber cater to the demand supply asymmetry, or I would say demand supply mismatch. Now, moving on to the pricing strategies. In this case, we have seven of them that cater to specifically to the service industry. The first one, skimming strategy. In this, the services are introduced at a high price. It is assumed that customers are more concerned about obtaining a quality service rather than the cost of the service. As the demand for the service falls, the price level is reduced. Next one, penetration pricing. In this, new services are priced low. The prices are kept to stimulate trial and thereby ensure customer loyalty. Low pricing is possible when the services are sensitive to price, and it is possible to achieve economies of large-scale operations by operating at larger volumes. This works best in case of low-fare airlines, and the example in this case could be of Southwest Airlines. Next, market segmentation pricing. The pricing strategy adopted to successfully cater to these groups is known as discriminatory pricing on the basis of market segmentation. Now that may be done on the following basis: first, different time of consumption. Example: travel and the hospitality tariffs are low during off season and high during peak season, especially Christmas. Next, different point of consumption. Therefore, higher prices in the cities than suburbs. And finally, group of buyers. Example: in this case, could be of children below ten years of age charged less in amusement parks such as Disneyland. Moving on to the fourth pricing, that is the service mix pricing, and it entails three subtypes. The first being competing services. The service provider may offer a new service similar to the existing one, but at a low price. The service firm competes with its own offerings. For example, an airline that offers a connecting flight in a particular route may offer a direct flight in the same route at a lesser price. Next, captive service. In this strategy, the customer has no choice but to get additional service from the service provider along with the core service. In this case, software developing firms who are given annual maintenance contract offer free upgrades of software to their clients, and finally, optional additional services. In this, the service provider gives an option to the customer to purchase the optional service along with the core service. Please remember the key word here is optional. The customer is not bound to take it. Example: Many holiday resorts located at hill stations keep their room tariffs low to attract tourists, but they charge more on optional services like restaurant and spa. Moving on to the fifth pricing strategy, that is price bundling. 
Price bundling is a strategy whereby a seller bundles together many different goods or services being sold and offers the entire bundle at a single price. The best example in this case is of McDonald's Happy Meal. Number six, discount pricing. It is used as a promotional device to encourage use during low demand time slots or to encourage customers to try a new service, such as introductory discount, usually offered by fitness gyms. At number seven is relationship pricing. The main objective of this type of pricing is to encourage customer loyalty by rewarding it. Thus, relationship pricing takes the lifetime value of customer into account while deciding the prices. This works wonderfully for Starbucks in their loyalty program. And finally, at number eight is competitors pricing. In this method of pricing, the price determined on the basis of competitors. Price under such situations may be used to gain short-term competitive advantage of rivals. So that's it, folks. This brings an end to the topic in pricing of services. These are the list of sources and links referred to for the content in the video. One of the key elements of the marketing mix is promotion, which is used for the purpose of encouraging sales and conveys to the customer the position of the service. Promotion enables service firms to connect their brands to different people, places, events, brands, experience, feelings, and things. Moving on to some guidelines for service communication. First, provide clues to tangibleize the service offer. Though services are intangible, they still have tangible components. The customers generally use these as substitute to evaluate various service alternatives. The tangible clues reduce the risk and eliminate the uncertainties associated with a service not known to a customer. Next, to make the service easy to understand. Due to the intangible nature of the services, it is generally difficult to comprehend with what exactly constitutes the offer of a service firm. The service provider has to use tangible evidence so that the prospective customer may comprehend the offer in a better way. The best example in this case would be of Starbucks and their famous white cup. Number three, promising what is possible. Service may be difficult to grasp mentally because of their intangibility. Tangible attributes of the service can be used to help better understand the service offered. Example, credit cards. Service firms should deliver on their promises. If a promise such as a fast delivery cannot be consistently met, it should not be made at all. This works beautifully in case of pizza chains. Next, use word of mouth publicity. In professional services like doctors, lawyers, teachers, hairdressers, schools, colleges, etc., word of mouth publicity that have already experienced service holds weightage in attracting prospective customers. Number five, maintain communications continuity. It is imperative to maintain continuity in communication for achieving differentiation and to portray a unifying and consistent theme over a period of time. Continuous advertising and publicity will enable the customer to get strongly attached to the theme. In this case, Instagram works wonders for the brand. Moving on to the various tools used in service promotion. Now, these are similar to general promotional tools and they include first, advertising, sales promotion, personal selling, word of mouth communication, public relation and publicity, sponsorship and direct marketing. Let's take a quick stab at each one of them briefly, starting with advertising. Advertising is a paid form of non-personal presentation and promotion of ideas, goods or services by an identified sponsor. As in, you can identify who is advertising the service. Relevant and consistent advertising is of great importance in service marketing because advertising can build awareness of the service that may add to the customer's knowledge of the service. It can also be used to help persuade the customers to buy and differentiate the service from other service offerings. In service, the core product is intangible and therefore it is difficult to promote services. Moving on, advertising has a major role in helping deliver the desired positioning for the service. Therefore, service marketeers frequently choose tangible elements within the product for promotion. We therefore find most of the airlines promote the quality of the cuisine, the width and pitch of their seats, and the quality of their in-flight services, which are certain tangible elements. In the recent times, advertising of financial services, telecommunication services, and retailing has grown dramatically. There are a number of advantages of using advertising. First, effective communication to the target audience. Next, cost effectiveness. Third, mass communication. Next, support other elements of marketing mix and build a strong brand image. Now, in case and services, there are seven Ps. And finally, create awareness and stimulate demand. Moving on to the next tool in service promotion is sales promotion. Sales promotion is an activity intended to stimulate purchases by adding an incentive to the inherent feature of the product or service offered. Inherent as an in inbuilt. A number of activities can be undertaken which aim at providing incentives to encourage sales. Next, personal selling. Works wonders in the banking and the insurance segment. 
Personal selling means personally persuading or aiding a prospective customer in purchasing a product or service or accepting or acting on an idea. Personal selling is a powerful two-way form of communication that allows an interactive relation to be developed between the buyer and the seller. Moving on to the fourth one, word of mouth communication. This works brilliantly in the era of social media. In service marketing while promoting the services, greater importance is given to referral and word of mouth communication. Uber in the initial days used word of mouth to their advantage. Customers are often closely involved in the delivery of a service and they talk to other potential customers and share their experiences. Where people are the deliverers of services, personal recommendation is offered the preferred source of information in the service industry. Next, public relation and publicity. PR can be defined as the planned and sustained effort to establish and maintain goodwill between an organization and its public. These public are all groups of people and organization which have an interest in the service company. Moving on to number 6, sponsorship. Sponsorship involves investments in events or causes so that an organization can enhance its reputation. One important advantage of sponsoring is that it allows a company to avoid the general media clutter that you face typically in advertising. And number 7, direct marketing. Direct marketing entails the following: telemarketing, direct mail, trade show participation, articles, speeches, presentation or white papers, news and press releases, and finally customer newsletters. Now moving on to certain examples of service promotion. In this case we look at the example of Google. Google in 2014 became the first organization to rent out the world's biggest and most costly digital billboard in Times Square, New York. 8 stories in height and estimated to cost around 2.5 million dollars, Google had the spot for 4 weeks. The size of the screen is roughly around the size of a football field. Approximately 300,000 pedestrians are estimated to walk past the billboard each day. Example of Kentucky Fried Chicken KFC one of the most beloved fast food chains globally ran out of chicken. This event was marked as a tremendous disaster for the brand that developed the entire empire on its star product chicken. In order to combat this mishap the brand had to shut nearly 1000 outlet based in the US momentarily. However, learning this opportunity their advertising agency played with the popular KFC acronym and created a print ad that says FCK. So that's it folks this brings an end to the topic on promotion of services. These are the list of sources and links referred to for the content in the video. How do you distribute services? Distribution is a process of transferring goods from the place of production to the place of consumption. In case of tangible goods, the distribution system involves the use of a network of intermediaries for distribution. In some cases, the goods are distributed directly. Now, in the case of services, they are inseparable from the service provider and can neither be stored nor transported. nor is their ownership or title passed along the channel line due to their peculiar characteristics of services the placing of services should not be treated in the same line as that of tangible products moving on there are certain services where the service provider has to be present personally in order to deliver the services according to their specifications for example starbucks on the other hand there are certain services which do not require the presence of a service provider example atm In services distribution means provision of personal services and information to the customer which adds value to the service. Services must be available at the right time and at the right place and it should be accessible with care and convenience by which the customer can avail the services. Moving on to the location of service premises as in the choice of location. The place of service delivery is very important. The decision regarding location is very much concerned with the selection of site from where the delivery of service takes place. the accessibility and availability form an important base for location of service premises accessibility refers to the convenience with which a service can be purchased used or received availability refers to the extent to which a service is obtainable or capable of being purchased used or received moving on let's look at the factors that are important while selecting a service location number 1 the nature of service services are perishable and inseparable from the service provider In such a case there is less flexibility and more cost involved in setting the location. For instance in case of restaurant and banks the location must be convenient to the customer as the customer has to go to the service provider. Next nature of interaction. The nature of interaction may differ from services to services. The question here is where the service is to be delivered whether at the place of service provider or at the place of the customer. Next customer needs and wants. According to market segment the customer wants and needs may differ. There are customers who may rate convenience as a major criteria for service while some others may want some special feature of the service 
and are willing to go to any location. Next, natural geographical location. There are certain services that do not have a choice of location. In case of holidays in the hill station or on beach, they are dependent on geographical locations rather than the convenience factor of both the customer and the firm. In these cases, these locations are predetermined and therefore the service provider must try and manage other elements of marketing in order to attract the customer. Next, technological advancement. Automation has advanced to such an extent that there is a great reduction in the choice of location decisions. In case of banking services, with the introduction of the ATMs, it is possible to separate the service provider from the customer. Next, dependency on other services. There are certain services like medical services, example X-ray, diagnostic laboratories and pharmacies, that are dependent on each other and therefore they are required in clusters of associated services and products. Next, infrastructure facilities. There are certain services which require rapid communication facilities with the other companies, example financial services. They are to be located in large and highly developed cities with excellent communication. And finally, target market decisions. The location must be closer to the largest customer, taking into consideration the infrastructure facilities available to access to the location. It should be easier for the target market to reach the service outlet. Next, intermediaries for service distribution, in this case, the choice of channel. A service distribution channel refers to the sequence of intermediaries or middlemen involved in moving the service from the producer to the customer. The popularly used channels of distribution are, first, franchises. Franchises are service outlets licensed by a principal to deliver a unique service concept it has created or popularized. For example, McDonald's uses a lot of franchises all over the world. Next are agents and brokers. Agents and brokers are representatives who distribute and sell the service of one or more service suppliers. And finally, the one that is famous of all are the electronic channels. Electronic channel includes forms of service provision through television, telephone, interactive media and computer. Many financial and information services are currently distributed to electronic media such as banking, bill payment, education, etc. Now moving on to some examples of place. The first one being Marriott International set to launch luxurious Ritz-Carlton Reserve brand of Saudi Arabia. Marriott International has signed an agreement with the Red Sea Development Company to launch its luxurious Ritz-Carlton Reserve brand off the west coast of Saudi Arabia. Set to debut in 2023 as Najuma, a Ritz-Carlton Reserve is expected to be part of, of the highly anticipated Red Sea destination. Najuma will be located on a set of private islands which are part of the Red Sea's blue hole cluster of islands. Surrounded by natural beauty and designed to mix with the environment, the resort will feature 63 1-4 bedroom water and beach villas. Next, Singapore Airlines increases services to Australian cities. Singapore Airlines will increase its operation to four times to key Australian cities. This will entail daily flights to Melbourne, while the frequency of Darwin and Keynes will increase to five times weekly. In line with the increase in operation, Singapore Airlines has invested around 230 million Singapore dollars in the development, design and installation of new cabin products. Ultimately, the growth in services to Australian destinations can be attributed to the region's peak period, which will ultimately support the recovery efforts of local tourism in the country. And the final example of Dominus India, which reduced the delivery time from 30 minutes to 20 minutes. Dominus Pizza in India has reduced the delivery time for 60% of its online orders to 20 minutes. Jubilee Food Works owns the exclusive master franchise rights of the international pizza chain in India. The rationale behind the shorter delivery time was to improve customer service and leveraging the opening of new outlets closer to consumer homes. The pizza chain has put into place a fortressing strategy which entails aggressively expanding its store count in existing markets to lower delivery times further. Jubilion currently operates about 1500 Domino stores in India and the plan is to take it to up to 3000 stores. So that's it folks. This brings an end to the topic on how to distribute services. These are the list of sources and links referred to for the content in the video. Let's start with people as in employees and the introduction. In services, people refers to all human actors who play a part in the service delivery process. Service can be labor intensive, that is people based or equipment based. In equipment based services, the equipment or machine is critical in providing the service, whereas labor plays a secondary role. The equipment may be automatic or manually operated. Many service industries are labor intensive, where human element is primary to service creation and delivery tool the secondary. Now let's look at the type of employees. First, Customer contact employees. They are known as frontline staff as they come in direct contact with the customers in the process of service delivery. Example, front office staff, 
waiters, air hostesses, etc. These contact employees are very important because they represent the organization and can directly influence the customer satisfaction. Next, non-contact employees. Those employees who contribute to the service delivery but do not come in contact with the customers are called non-contact employees. Such employees include the administrative staff, the chefs in the hotel, etc. They might possess high technical skill and are competent in their work. Moving on to how do you manage people as an employee in services, certain industry examples. Let's start with the first one, in this case, Disneyland's Aspire Education Program. Disneyland plans to partner with California State University, Fullerton and Fullerton College to offer free in-person education to Disneyland Ali employees. Through the $150 million Disney Aspire campaign, Disneyland employees get free college education which were earlier restricted to online classes. Disneyland currently has 4,000 employees enrolled in the Aspire program. The Aspire program covers the cost of 200 college degrees at the associate, bachelor's and master's level, including 100% of tuition, fees and books at network schools for full-time and part-time early employees. Next example is of Singapore Airlines which plans to hire about 2,000 cabin crews. Singapore Airlines plans to hire 2,000 cabin crews by March 2023. Singapore Airlines has already hired more than 800 cabin crews. It is important to know that about 3 in 5 of these were former cabin crew members who had left the job due to the pandemic. During the pandemic, which is around September 2020, Singapore Airlines had slashed 4,300 positions across its airlines. Moving on to the next example of Starbucks investing in employee experience. Starbucks CEO Howard Skulls announced a series of investments in the company totaling about a billion dollars to enhance employee experience, health and pay. Schultz added, we will introduce joy and connection back into the partner experience. The partners are then case are the employees. Since his return as CEO earlier this year, Skulls has been visiting retail and roasting plant partners around the country to understand how their lives have been impacted over the last two years. The next example of Starbucks Coffee Masters. The expert coffee makers with certain years of experience at Starbucks are called coffee masters. They are the ones that wear the black aprons. According to Starbucks stories, there are over 5,000 active coffee masters in Starbucks stores worldwide. The process to become a coffee master is a rigorous one, which starts during any new employee's initial training. There are ultimately three different stages of Coffee Academy baristas when they need to pass to become a Starbucks coffee master. Now moving on to some generic strategies for managing people in your organization. First, hire the right people. The first step towards developing service conscious employees is to recruit and select the right people to deliver the service. Recruiting and selecting the right employees have always been a challenge for managers. Next, develop people to deliver quality services. Once the organization has selected and recruited the right staff, the service organization can develop people to deliver quality service. Through adequate training, empowering the staff to be responsible to customers' need and promoting teamwork to support the service delivery process. Next, or number three, providing the support system. The employees require adequate support in delivering the customer promise. The support must be from co-workers, supervisors and management. And finally, retain the best employee. It is not sufficient for the service firm to just hire, train and develop employees to deliver quality service. They must also strive to retain the best employee in the business. In order to achieve this, the service firm must treat employees as customers and also include them in the company's vision. Moving on to a concept of boundary spanning. Frontline employees of service firms are referred as boundary spanners as they operate at the boundary of the organization. Frontline employees link the inside of an organization to the outside world. Teachers are considered boundary spanners in a school. Staff at the reception of a hotel are also termed as boundary spanners. They understand, filter and interpret information and resources to meet operational and marketing goals. Because of the position they occupy, boundary spanners often have conflicting roles. The next and the final concept in this chapter is of emotional labor. Employees, especially service employees, experience conflict and stress but are expected to have a pleasant disposition towards the customer. This is called emotional labor. It goes beyond the physical or mental skills needed to deliver the quality service. It often requires to suppress their true feelings to deliver the service. It arises from the discrepancy between the way frontline staff feel inside and the emotions they are expected to portray in front of the customers. A doctor is always expected to be warm and helpful to all his patients, even if he or she has experienced failure in Operation Theatre or maybe some personal problem at home. Next, an air hostess is always expected to greet all passengers with a smile and maintain the smiling personality for 8-9 to nine hours a day irrespective of her emotional state of mind. 
finally concluding this with an example of disney park in disney park the job of a mascot requires to be a friendly and cheerful the whole day in on a given day the employee is not up to his or her usual self disney park allows another employee to fill in for the day the company realizes that a job of a mascot entails an employee to be at his or her friendly best all the time which can be quite difficult on certain days when the employee has some personal problems so that's it folks this brings an end to the topic on people in services these are the list of sources and links referred to for the content in the video generally a service transaction involves the interaction of the service provider with the customer in a service environment physical evidence is termed as the social environment along with the tangible cues where the service provider and the customer interact ziatmal and bitner define physical evidence as the environment in which the service is delivered and where the firm and customer interact and any tangible commodities help in performance of the service moving on to some examples of physical evidence first in the case of hotels physical evidence of a hotel room includes a well furnished room warm decor good room amenities clean linens etc additionally it also includes smart tv hot water kettle mini bar and refreshments bath gels and shampoo kits in the bathroom and many others in case of a fast food joint the ambience is usually vibrant and colorful with a casual setup and peppy music to appeal to the youth the digital menu boards tables chairs peppy music trays dustbins etc fall under the gamut of physical evidence of a fast food joint moving on to hospitals physical evidence of a hospital room typically includes sanitized ambient conditions clean linens sober colored furnishings etc additionally it also includes the uniform of doctors and nurses medical equipment and devices in case of a college it includes a wifi enabled large campus classrooms and an updated library inside a classroom an apt environment includes clean floors brightness of the rooms proper ventilation wide white boards and good audio visual support moving on to the industry of banking a bank's physical evidence involves well defined counters for each type of banking service additionally it also includes spacious seating area for customers while they await their turn and technologically advanced computer systems and finally in the case of airlines in case of an airline the physical evidence includes the aircraft's exterior and interior more specifically interiors as passengers spend the maximum time there cabin interiors lighting temperature well dressed cabin crew comfortable reclining seats and in flight entertainment constitute the major part of physical evidence of an airline now let's move on to some live examples in the case of physical evidence the first example on singapore airlines a380 first class inside singapore's a380 first class suite that features a full bed private bathroom and large leather armchair on board the a380 is singapore airlines swanky new first class suite which features up to 100 square feet of living space The suite is an upgrade from the original A380 first class cabin that debuted in 2007. Since then Singapore has retrofitted its current 380s with a new suite which was first introduced in 2017. Here is a large leather reclining armchair. Moving on to the next example of hotels that serve a special experience after the dark. In this case examples of the Oberoi Amar Villas in Agra India. The next is JW Marriott Maldives Resort and Spa in Maldives. Great Plains Conservation, a South African-based conservation organization, and the Nautilus in Maldives. Now moving on to understanding physical evidence better. Physical evidence includes two areas. They are service cape and tangibles. Let's look at each one of them briefly, starting with service cape. Service cape is further divided into three parts: ambient conditions, space and function. and sign symbol and artifact now let's take a stab at each one of them quickly first being ambient conditions ambient conditions entails the following first quality of air the temperature and quality of air in any service environment plays an important role in customers moods and temperaments the quality of air also relates to humidity dust free freshness or naturalness of air restaurants have separate smoking zone as to maintain good indoor quality of air In aircrafts, bouts of humid air are pumped into the cabin to maintain pressure levels for flying at high altitudes. Next, sound and music. The sound factor indicates the impact of volume on customer habits and reactions to a particular service. In hospitals, there are dedicated silent zones and ICUs and operation theaters. Music and beats also have psychological effects on customer behavior that eventually adds to the service experience. 
Some hospitals play soft, soothing music and spiritual chants to foster calmness in the environment and wellness for patients. In the same way, jazz music is continuously played in five-star restaurants for the experience of fine dining. Moving on to the third element under ambient condition and that's smell and fragrance. Do you know humans are able to recognize approximately 10,000 odors and more impressively recall smell with 65% accuracy even after a year? The best example in this case is of the Oberoi Hotel in Mumbai in which diffusers are placed in common areas that set off a particular fragrance by forest essentials. The essence that they use is of a specific Madurai jasmine. Going on to the fourth element under ambient conditions, color. It relates to the attention and impression a customer would develop at the first instance of the brand while consuming the service. For instance, yellow catches attention sooner than any other color. The school buses are mostly yellow. indicating due caution to other vehicles on road play schools on the other hand are made more colorful and attractive making learning rooms alive hospitals typically have white interiors as the color relates to purity calmness cleanliness and a sanitized environment moving on to the second element under service cape space and function under space and function the first sub element is decor the concept of decor can be well understood through the example of a restaurant the decor at various restaurants denote the themes they adopt as to acquainting customers with their distinct identity and ambience chinese restaurants typically have an authentic chinese decor and music most outlets have a familiar decor with at the entrance and a wall of gold jars rosewood furniture and subdued designer lighting next is the layout it reflects the spaciousness ambience and seating arrangements in which a service is delivered for instance some restaurants have a private dining area for larger families so as to avoid inconvenience to other guests On the other hand, pharmacy and hospitals are strategically located on the ground floor for easy access to patients and their relatives. And the sub third element under space and function are the facilities exterior. Typically includes the exterior of a service location. Customers form the first impression about the service. For example, lauded as a premium five star hotel in Mumbai, the Leela Mumbai is an island of green situated near the international airport. The exterior of the hotel includes 11 acres of ornate gardens and cascading waterfalls. Moving on to the third sub element under service cape sign symbols and artifacts. Now these are used to educate and train the customer. It also includes certifications from valid authorities to confirm the proficiency and trustworthiness of the service provider. Doctor's degree, non-smoking and seat belt signs on a flight, instruction to different zones in a hotel, instruction inside a bank, etc. fall under the gamut of sign symbols and artifacts. Lastly the concept of a symbol can be explained through Air India's Indian Airlines mascot the Maharaja. Since Air India has been symbolized by Maharaja since decades, the company has decided to tweak its image to make it more in tune with the changed times. And finally, the other area of physical evidence, tangibles. Tangibles representation of service include brochures, uniform, letterheads, business cards, reports, internet presence and equipment etc. Some restaurants have a unique method of using an iPad to take orders. Thus, the iPad is a tangibility factor here. Additionally, an insurance policy is given by insurance companies, uniforms given by hospitals etc fall under the purview of tangibles. So that's it folks, this brings an end to the topic on physical evidence. These are the list of sources and links referred to for the content in the video. Process refers to the procedures, mechanisms and flow of activities through which a service is delivered. In addition it involves tasks schedules and routines by which a product or service is delivered to the customer services are actions performed for or with customers and typically involve a sequence of steps and activities the combination of these steps constitute a service process which is evaluated by customers now let's look at an example of process in this case the brand mastercard mastercard smile to pay process Mastercard believes that touchless technology will shorten queues, speed up transaction times, improve hygiene and security in businesses worldwide. The company is pilot testing its new smile to pay system in Brazil with the rationale being saving on time for customers at checkouts. The process entails customers installing an app which will take their picture and the payment information. This information will be eventually stored on the third party provider's server. At the checkout counter, the customer's face will be matched with the already stored data. and once they find the perfect match funds will be deducted automatically now moving on to how to designing a service process well it is necessary to understand whether the service itself is process dependent equipment based service or services with highly intangible attributes such as banking legal or insurance and to do that we have the following pointers 
First, customer participation. For most service systems, the customer is present when the service is being performed. Instead of being a passive bystander, the customer represents productive labor just at the moment it is needed. Opportunities exist for increasing productivity by shifting some of the service activities onto the customer. Furthermore, customer participation can increase the degree of customization. Involving the customers in the service process can support a competitive strategy of cost leadership with limited customization if focused on a self-serve customer market. The best example in this case would be customers punching in their own orders at the McDonald's at the digital screens. Next, degree of customer contact. Customer contact refers to the physical presence of the customer in the system. Degree of customer contact can be measured by the percentage of time the customer is in the system relative to the total service time. In high contact services, the customer determines the timing of demand and the nature of service by direct participation in the process. Customers have no direct influence on the production process of low contact system because they are not present. The next element is the degree of divergence. Now a standardized service which has low divergence is designed for high volume with a narrowly defined and focused service. The tasks are routine and require a workforce with relatively low levels of technical skill. Due to the repetitive nature of service, opportunities for substitution of automation for labor are abound, that is, use of vending machine, automatic car wash, reducing the discretion of service workers. For customized services which have high divergence, more flexibility and judgment are required to perform the service task. In addition, more information is exchanged between the customer and the service worker. These characteristics of customized services require high levels of technical and analytical skill because the service process is unprogrammed and not well defined. For example, counseling service. To achieve customer satisfaction, decision making is delegated to service workers. And keep in mind, service workers in this case are like walking billboards. Next, location of service delivery. Should the service delivery process be located at the service provider's premises or should the process be carried out at the customer's place? These are some important questions. For some services like painting, carpet cleaning, lawn care, etc., the service has to be delivered at home. Services that generally require the customer to come to the supplier have a greater opportunity to control the delivery experience. Example, dry cleaning, legal, medical, etc. However, increasingly many services are being delivered without the customer and supply meeting. Example, through telephone banking, ATMs, etc. And finally, complexity of service. Complexity reflects the number of steps involved in delivering the service. Whether the service is high or low in complexity and in divergence can be readily determined by looking at its blueprint. For example, a physician's service is high in both complexity and diversion, whereas hotel services are high in complexity but low in divergence. Next, what is a service blueprint? Now we all know that processes refers to procedures, mechanisms and flow activities by which the service is delivered. And it does involve procedures, tasks, schedules, mechanisms and routine. Therefore, service firms use service blueprinting to better manage the service encounter and to allow clear visualization of the service process. Now let's take a quick stab at the service blueprint components. The first component itself is the physical evidence, that is the tangibles that customers are exposed to that can influence their quality perception. The next itself is the customer action. These include all the steps that customers take part in as a part of the service delivery process. Then comes the on-stage employee action that the customer is facing. Those actions of frontline contact employees that occur as a part of a service encounter. When the customer interacts with the on-stage employee action, it is known as line of interaction. And all this happens in front stage. So these three components, that is physical evidence, customer action, and on-stage employee action comes in the front stage because it is visible to the customer. Until here is the line of visibility. Then comes the backstage, employ which are invisible contact employees below the line of visibility now picture yourself in a restaurant you are the customer you have walked into a restaurant so you whatever actions you do comes under the customer action gamut around you are the table chairs lightings whatever you can see and feel is the physical evidence and the waiter coming and pouring a glass of water for you is the on-stage employee action now the backstage employee action in this case would be the chef who is behind the kitchen doors he is the invisible contact employee below the line of visibility Supporting these backstage employees are activities carried out by individuals and units within the company who are not contact employees but need to happen for the service to be delivered. Any interaction that takes place behind in the backstage between the backstage employee and the support system is known as line of internal interaction. Since this happens backstage, it falls under the gamut of backstage. 
So these are the final components of service blueprint. So that's it folks. This brings an end to the topic on seven pieces of marketing. Do subscribe to our channel where you witness such videos daily. Thank you and stay tuned for more videos.